guys, it's a girl Tando. Today I'm going to be talking to you about an awesome video. I think that's what most people really want to know when they apply to work in China or even embark on a journey to come to China. I'm going to be speaking about the salaries roughly depending on where you are and the types of schools that China actually has. Okay, so let's get into the video. Okay, so China has kindergartens, we have uh, training centers, we have public schools, universities, and universities, okay, and the others that I'm not going to talk about, but I'm going to be mainly speaking about, speaking about kindergarten, uh, training centers, public schools, and maybe universities, okay. What is a kindergarten? Kindergarten, we roughly teach from maybe two years old sometimes one years old to one year old to maybe six years old okay roughly but it's mainly kids toddlers okay and then we have training centers training centers they mainly teach from three years old to 12 years old so you will see k to 12 and then some of them like mine they go up to 18 years old and then we have public schools. Public schools, it just depends which grade you are teaching, okay? Public schools from any, can be um, public school, intermediate phase, junior, high school, depending where you are, where your qualification actually puts you. And then universities, you know, young adults and upwards. So kindergartens, you mostly will work from Monday to Friday in general. Sometimes you may be required to work weekends, but it's mainly Monday to Friday because parents are working Monday to Friday, so they will send their kids to a school from Monday to Friday. It will be like a nine to five job or eight to five job. And then you have training centers. Training centers, their time varies but it's mostly after school. So after the kids come back from um, public school, they will come to a training center. But your busiest days, which start from morning to maybe late evening or early evening type of thing, will be Saturday and Sunday. So you will be off two days a week, Monday to Tuesday, and then you may work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, half day, and then Saturday and Sunday, full day. Public schools, you know the drill, everyday type of thing. You will be setting up question papers. You will be required to go to meetings. You know, all those things that we do in public schools that you also did when you were young or your teachers did when you were young. So that's that. How does the payment differ? Kindergartens, they always, most of the time, they will always be paying a lot of money because you are working with a handful of people they have a lot of emotions they have tantrums you know everything is just everywhere so you need to be active you need to sympathize you actually need to be a parent at times and then you you just need to play around with them a lot so it needs a lot of energy and then training centers is you don't need a lot because those kids are, I don't know, I don't want to say well behaved, but it's mostly you don't have like full classes. Maybe you have approximately less than 12 students or less than 14 students in your class and then you will teach them in a more one-on-one um, -on -one type of basis. And yeah, so it doesn't really require a lot. Lesson planning and in between activities. And then we have public schools. Public schools, obviously you know that. You will be teaching from in the morning and then you'll have a break and then you'll have teach again and then there'll be exams. But the wonderful thing about kindergartens and public schools and universities, they will guarantee you holidays. And holidays in China are very long. We have summer and winter vacations. Actually, they don't even call them holidays. They are called vacation summer and winter it's like sometimes it's two months i think this is gonna be two months for summer and then it's mostly a one month vacation and then you will have in between public holidays official chinese public holidays in between 
but obviously you will be doing as i mentioned all the markings and then training centers they don't we actually we don't have vacations we will have let's say 12 days a year and that's a vacation two weeks type of thing for your vacation that you can take any time depending uh or you have to actually speak to your to your manager and then agree on a day or in a month that you want to take your vacation and you are obviously given the public holidays but sometimes they move them around because they if let's say a public holiday falls on your weekend like my school we don't get an off day on that weekend we will move it around let's say we will have more days within the week that we are off but the weekend we are always teaching okay so that's how it works how does the salary differ again it depends where you are we have uh, china actually has classification over the cities it has so we have t1 to t4 sometimes t5 tiers so tier one is your famous and um, well-known places such as your beijing shanghai guangzhou shenzhen and then t2 you have nanjing hangzhou suzhou wuhan xi'an and the others chongqing and t3 you have jinan hefei dalian uh Zhengzhou. and then t4 you have xi'anmen i'm just mentioning the famous one xi'anmen ningbo nanning yes etc some of them are not really that famous okay so i'm not gonna mention them. i'm mentioning the sort of well-known cities and then if you are in a t1 your beijings you will be paid a lot of money why beijing is busy i'm making an example using beijing beijing is busy it's populated there's pollution so you'll be paid a lot let's say roughly from twenty thousand rmb upwards it depends and the reason being is because it's busy and if you want to stay in a cbd it's going to be expensive to pay rent and mostly schools on t1 places they don't give you or they don't pay rent for you you will have to pay rent sometimes if you want to save a lot of money you may end up having to share with a lot of chinese people or if you are lucky then you may find a friend and share but if you are like me and you don't like sharing then you ain't gonna go to beijing and then we have t2 t2 xi'an also the same they can pay you roughly from fifteen thousand to let's say twenty thousand in general they may pay more they may pay less depending on which school takes you so t t2 um it's in close proximity to t1 uh it's also a little bit expensive to stay there the rent is a little bit high there's a lot of people tourist side so you can imagine the cbd is being expensive food uh clothing if you're actually buying from the shops and you are not shopping online um between t1 and t2 you may have to shop online a lot because online is always stable it doesn't change if you are in a t2 or in a t4 so you may rely on that and you will be busy a lot because there's a lot of people there may be a lot of students that you have to teach and a lot of hours you have to put in for the money they are actually paying you for not to forget the tax the tax so mostly t2 and t1 they pay you money before tax so that means you will be paying tax for yourself alone and then we have t3 t3 are your fairly small cities and quite a lot not a lot of people the air quality is better things are cheaper now so you can survive it's not really small but you can survive you know so they will pay you roughly from thirteen thousand to maybe plus minus fifteen thousand rmb if you need to convert all these uh, numbers 
and you are in South Africa, just double the prices that I have mentioned and it will be roughly plus minus that amount of money. Um, and then you have T4. T4 is your smaller cities before the villages. T4 is where you will be paid from, I've seen actually as low as 7.5 to let's say 30,000 RMB. So you will be paid that and mostly some schools or most of the schools, they will pay that money after tax. So if they say they will pay you 12,000 RMB, you will get that money as it is. You don't have to pay any tax and you don't have to worry about rent because they have it, they have it covered. And the only thing you have to worry about is paying your uh, utilities, electric electricity, water, food, and whatever you may want to add on there. So yeah, and the places from T, uh, the, the, the apartments, yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Apartments in T1 <laughs> places, like in South Africa, if you're in the CBD, you'll find you're paying ridiculous amounts, but the, the place you're actually staying in or the apartment is so small, there's not a lot of space. And then as you go upwards, T2, three four the apartment places or the square meters actually get bigger you have a lot of space and yeah man so just consider that when you're coming to china research what you want spe specifically what you want i want to come to china because i want to have a good time i'm young i'm free at home i don't have a lot of responsibilities then fine t2 t1 is your type of coffee but if you are like me and other people, you want to save a lot, you want to help at home, you want to make a difference in your future savings, investments, then T3 and T4 are more your cup of coffee. You will actually find out that you are actually saving most of your salary. If not three quarters, you will save all of it. If you save all of it, that means you have side jobs. You are teaching online or you are doing just um maybe you will be one of those people who speak at a train station and say the train is boarding blah 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 you may get some commercials you just need to try and find things to do sometimes they may be looking for foreign receptionists at a hotel because they love hotels they really do love hotels everywhere so they may be looking for a foreign receptionist and someone who can speak English very well, so hey, tick. You are already a foreigner. You are here to te to teach English, so you qualify. You, they don't need previous experience, so you can do quite a lot. And these jobs, they don't pay little money. Sometimes you maybe pay a thousand RMB per week. Imagine four weeks. That's four thousand RMB. You don't even need your teaching salary. You can just take it back home. Okay, so just do your research, ask people what they're doing, ask where they are, the um, cost of living. As I mentioned, I think now you may have an idea of what to expect when you are going to this place. And a disclaimer, everything I've said is not exactly to the brim, but it is roughly what is happening. So I'm giving you a bit of an idea. Don't come at me and say, but you said... I'm going to be paid this amount of money but hey I found that I'm paid this amount of money and I am in this city no it's not like that okay it is roughly the estimate in majority I'm speaking like that in general <laughs> so please do not come at me and the only thing I want you to come at me at is by subscribing liking sharing my videos and don't forget to click on the notification bell you'll be notified every time i actually upload my videos thank you once again for watching 